Hello, and welcome back to a very special episode of Koji's Corner. Um, You may be asking yourself, is this not the very first episode of Koji's Corner? And to that, I would say yes. (laughs) Yes, it is, but that does not make it any less special. If anything, that should make it more special to you, the viewers at home. So, today we're going to be talking about episode 5 and 6 of the newest Mindy Kaling animated television series, Velma. And not only will I be giving my thoughts about both of the episodes, I'm also going to talk about what I think the, possibly the biggest and only flaw in this show is currently, how I think it could be better, and what I'm hoping again to see from the show, my predictions for the rest of the season. So without further ado, let's get into it. I lied. I filmed that intro and really and truly, I don't even know if I want to talk about the actual events of what happened in episode five and six. I mean, it's just so boring. It's really boring. And so I would rather talk about what really makes the show Velma bad and the reason why it doesn't have to be as bad as, you know, it seems like the writers want it to be, as bad as the audience wants it to be, it doesn't have to be that bad. And here's why. Um, the worst part about the Velma series, let's just get straight to it, is Velma. She literally ruins the show at every opportune moment. At every moment where you think, you know, something is finally getting interesting, something is finally getting good, she ruins it. So seeing just how terrible They decided to make Velma, but also trying to make it seem like she's not at the same time is what baffles me. In episode five, we see her not only admit that she does not care about Norville. She doesn't care about Norville's feelings. She doesn't care about Norville's interests or hobbies. She doesn't care about Norville as a person. She sees him as an object that she owns because he was obsessed with her, because he devoted himself to her, despite how hilarious it was for her to even think or for her for him to tell her that like he had feelings for her. Weird and no one likes me. That's not true. I like you. Like, like, like you. Wait, what? No, you don't. You're like a brother to me. That's hilarious. <laughs> Wait, Norville, your joke worked, you genius. Keep making me laugh. I wasn't joking. As funny as it was for her, now knowing that he is able to devote himself to someone else, to find someone who would actually listen to the things that he cares about, and also, you know, accept his devotion, that is what cuts her deeply. Oh, I'm so excited. Now you have Gigi to talk about boring stuff like your swords and feelings. So when we're together, we can focus solely on finding my mom. That is what drives her to then manipulate Gigi, Norville's new girlfriend, to then manipulate Norville, to then manipulate Daphne. And I know I manipulate, <laughs> not only am I saying it a lot, but it may be a strong word to use, but it's one that's very obviously being portrayed by her character her and Daphne in a couple episodes ago literally had this whole reconciliation where we learned that Velma was the one to abandon their friendship that it wasn't Daphne got hot and popular all of a sudden and left Velma behind no it was Velma who stopped talking to Daphne it was Velma who stopped being Daphne's friend and started treating her like shit like it was Velma who did all of that stuff to her while Daphne still just wanted to be her friend yes I know I know now you want to apologize to me for what for saying I'm not popular enough for you I never said that well someone said it you said it and I meant it you abandoned me too what only after you got hot and ditched me that's not true you shut me out first I shut everyone out I still haven't seen my dentist nor do I intend to um and then this episode and especially yeah in episode five Daphne is finding out more about her bio parents. That's going to be like the B plot for like the next two episodes. And Daphne is learning more about her bio parents. She's like discovering clues, unraveling mysteries, you know, going off on her own little adventure. And she's so excited. She wants to tell someone. She wants to tell anyone. And the first person she wants to tell is Velma. But guess who doesn't have enough time for her? Because if it's not about Velma, then she doesn't care. Literally, if it's not about Velma, she doesn't care. 
And so then we get a really cute scene between like Norville and Daphne and it is so cute. I'm going to play that as well because it's one of the cutest scenes probably throughout the entire show because you want to see bonds throughout the other characters with each other because so far in every episode, I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but the gang does not interact with each other. No one interacts with another person from the original, uh, you know, group of, I guess, four humans. So a group of four. Um, I'm not going to call it a foursome, <laughs> but a group of four. And so when we finally do get to see these interactions between Norville and Daphne, they're very sweet. They're very wholesome. And especially in this episode, she's so excited to tell him. He's so excited to listen. And before we can get any more of this interaction, Velma runs in and legitimately steals him away just so that she can then complain about her own problems to Norville. I may have found my real You parents. haven't seen Norville, have you? He's like the only dork in town not inside my house. No, but Cupids, do not use that plunger as a mute. That's how Ebola happened. Velma, you're not going to believe this, but I may have found my birth parents. No way. Tell me every detail. Sorry, I just need to borrow this guy for one second. Like... It cut out one of the sweetest scenes that we've probably seen. The only two nice characters in this entire freaking town interacting with each other. And Velma ruins it once again. I, that scene just really pissed me off. <laughs> it really made me really angry. And I think, I mean, I've had this thought since the show started. And you want to try desperately to understand where she could be coming from, right? Why is she so cynical? Why is she so bitter? Why does Velma have this sort of hatred towards the world? And you think, oh, maybe it's because the world hates her back. But the world hates her back with because of justified reasons. <laughs> the world is justified in their hate towards Velma. She's just a really terrible person. I mean, her dad in the original few episodes and every single episode is like, your mom didn't disappear. She left us. And then we have flashbacks of Velma being the most annoying child in the world world I completely believe that her mom would have just left her because she's annoying I told you this your mother didn't go missing because you solved a mystery she left us oh god mom wasn't taken she left because she hated us the dad is a terrible father the mom was probably annoyed that she had a terrible husband and a terrible daughter and left and that is a much more believable story than you know her going missing it doesn't make any sense so i got a little i got a little heated there i got <laughs> let's calm down and let's take a deeper dive into velma's character so velma has these hallucinations essentially they happen every single time that she's trying to uncover more about her mom's disappearance every time that she's you know told a new clue uh, discover something new information anything like that if she even thinks about trying to solve a mystery for some reason she has these hallucinations which you can really tell throughout these two episodes that they the writers they were not they did not think about these hallucinations at all they didn't actually think about you know fleshing them out making them make sense they didn't actually care it was definitely just like a lazy tactic which I have a theory of how it could have been done better. You can tell that they got really tired of them by the fifth episode. I don't know why they made her character this way. At every single turn, when you think that Velma may be justified for the way that she acts, she's proved wrong. In the episode where they have to start um, introducing, they have to make a list of all like the hottest girls in the city or in the school or whatever because there's only high schoolers getting murdered from this one school they have to make a list of the hottest girls five hottest girls in the school to allocate police officers to guard them to watch over them to protect them from the serial killer and Bella makes this huge fuss like we're gonna leave it up to a bunch of white guys we're gonna leave it up to a bunch of men to judge women about their appearances and who they think is hot and so then they tell her you know what you can make the list then. If you care that bad, then you can make the list. And so then she goes to make the list. And while she's making this list, not only do we only see from the only five girls that ended up being chosen in the end. Okay. Not only do we only see them no, to begin with, but also she then complains later on, like, how am I supposed to list, make a list based purely off of men's societal standards of how women should look? Girl, you don't have to. 
you can make the list based off who you think is the hottest. You chose to make the list. So you can do it based on who you think is the hottest. But then she starts complaining. And then she goes to a white man and has him make the list anyways. Why did you complain? The plot point made absolutely zero sense. It didn't make any sense. I literally hated that episode so much. So again, Velma complains about some sort of system or something that's wrong, but she's also the cause. She gives into the system. She doesn't really care. Wait, so a couple of middle-aged white dudes are gonna decide which of us are hottest? Okay, well, if you have a better idea how to make the list, maybe you should do it, Velma. You want me to make the list? I'd rather die. <gasps> Velma, please. That's a very insensitive thing to say. I mean, especially from a student who is in no danger from a hot girl murderer. Why am I here? I need your help ranking the five hottest girls at Crystal Cove High. Yeah, I don't know. I did that for the science fair last year and got suspended. I think that them wanting to flip Scooby-Doo on its head and, you know, introduce this whole new, a whole new world with these characters in a way that we've never seen them before. And I think it works. Honestly, I can see it. Shaggy now being not obsessed, you know, not a stoner, not a glutton. Cool, whatever. We get to see him as like this guy who's trying to find himself and stick up for himself more and become more of a man. Whatever. That's cool. We have Fred who has overbearing parents. While I would still love to bring back the trap loving aspect of Fred. I think that's a great decision for his character. I don't know if they can even fit that in at this point. He doesn't have any interest besides pleasing Velma. I just thought of something different, but it seems like everyone's, all the main cast, their interests are just pleasing Velma. And he's become the new Norville because someone needs to be obsessed with Velma every second of the day or else the show won't function. So, <sighs> but now that he has, you know, discovered the feminine mystique and, you know, he, he's a little bit more of a himbo. He's a little bit more self-aware. I like this version of Fred. I'm hallucinating. Quick, make me laugh like Norville would have. I, I would, but all I can think of right now is the gender pay gap. Is it funny? Women make 20% less than men and women of color even less? <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Like the direction that he's going in. Again, I just hope he gets into traps. <laughs> and yeah, Daphne. I like Daphne. I like that she's self-sufficient. I like that she's smart and funny. She has some of the funniest lines most of the time. I like her delivery. She does a really great job. And I think all the other characters have redeeming qualities. All of the other three have very redeeming qualities about them. And I can see how a show with these characters could have worked. With a few tweaks, with someone in the writer's room that actually cared about Scooby-Doo in the writer's room with them, I think with a few tweaks, we could have actually gotten a good show. We could have. We could have gotten a good show if they cared a little bit. But it's clear that they didn't care. And I want them to have a season two genuinely because I think they can bring someone in who cares just to tweak things around a little bit. But as far as like if Velma keeps heading down this path, I don't see how anyone would want to still be around her. I just don't understand why people still like her. Anyway, the thing that I really hate is that the plot really doesn't matter. Nothing that's happening like matters because nothing makes sense. It seems like there's a cop out for everything. Velma stops having her hallucinations in episode six. Um, if you would like to take the time to guess as to why, <laughs> if you would like to take a wild guess, if you have not watched the show and you would like to take a wild guess as to why Velma has her hallucinations, any reason in the entire world, if you would like to take a guess, do so now while I take a little bit of this root beer. Um, if you guess daddy issues, <laughs> you'd be right on the money. <laughs> yeah. The entire reason that she has these life threatening, she has died and has been brought back to life because of them is because she has daddy issues because her dad doesn't believe that her mom went missing because why would he? <laughs> Why would he believe you? I just don't understand. So now that he says, ah, I definitely believe you this time. Now that he says that, now the hallucinations have stopped. And they try to be so self-aware about it. They're like, oh, Shaggy making me laugh didn't stop it. Kissing Daphne didn't stop it. But now they're, they're good. They're gone forever because my dad loves me. 
Does he love you or does he just believe you? My hallucinations are finally over! Are, are you sure? Because I feel like you've said that before, like a few times. No, it's over. I know my dad believes me. I'm so sorry I doubted you, Valma. It's okay, because when you saw I was willing to die for my truth, you finally came around because you do love me. Yes, but also, Jinkies is written in your mother's handwriting. She was just here. Jinkies! Okay, now you're totally trying to make it a thing. Like, ugh, I hate it. I hate it. It doesn't make any sense. Why would they make that the cause? And so now I'm going to talk about what I would have done differently if I was the writer. If I was behind the wheel, I would have given her visions instead of these stupid freaking hallucinations that literally pause the story. They pause the story. They take up so much time to where she can't learn new things about her mom because she's having these stupid ass hallucinations. If it were me, I would have given her visions instead of whenever she tries to like piece together clues about her mom instead of these hallucinations she would have a vision now these visions can be just as life-threatening they can affect her mental health they can affect her physical form whatever whatever they want to do with that and if they like that would be the reason why she would be hesitant to you know uncover more about her mom because they would be causing her physical pain they would be causing her mental you know stress or anything that she would you know not be able to tell her visions from what's happening in front of her you know her realities are starting to collide anything like that would have been more interesting because with these visions we would have been actually able to maybe get an insight as to more of what happened in episode six yes i'm just jumping straight ahead to episode six i will talk about daphne's b plot but it's pretty boring and leads to nothing so as most of the b plots do in this show if i'm being honest but if we were to have visions we learned in episode five and six that shaggy's mom the principal was the daughter of edna purdue who was a neurologist who invented brain transplants that the government then wanted to use to stop, wait for it, meddling kids. Yes, that's how they fit that in here. Yeah, <laughs> they wanted to use her brain transplants to put the brains of the military inside meddling kids so they would, I don't know, like war or something. <sighs> and so... <laughs> We learn that the principal's mom knew about this the whole time and that because of this, Dad, Velma's mom knew that the principal was the daughter of Edna Purdue and Edna Purdue's lab is in Fred's mansion's basement. So, you know, everything's connected, of course. And I think instead of the principal literally like spelling it out and telling us the story and we just have to sit here and listen to her tell this story, we could have had... I don't know, Velma go over to Fred's house and then hang out and then she sees a door that leads to the basement and that's what causes a vision. Um, you know, if her and her mom have some sort of like tie to each other. Editing Allie here to say that I think a really good way that we could have incorporated Velma and her mother's connection is if Velma had these visions while wearing her mother's glasses. There's some sort of supernatural tie that would have allowed her to see her mother's maybe like last few weeks on earth leading up to her mother's disappearance whenever she wears her mother's glasses. Because clearly if she wasn't wearing glasses as a kid, she didn't need the glasses. She just put them on because they were her mom's. I don't know. And she sees a vision and that's how she learns about her mom going down into the basement. That's where she finds Edna Purdue's journals, pictures of Edna and the principal, the daughter. Then she goes and confronts the principal. Something like that. Something that's actually moving the plot forward and giving a little bit more mystery to the characters that are involved. Why is this in Fred's basement? What does the principal have to do with this? Why was my mom down here? Stuff like that to actually move the plot forward in an interesting way and not having it all just spoon fed to the audience. It's it, it just shows that they don't really think the audience is intelligent enough to follow a story like that. And they have to tell us each step of the way exactly how it happened and why it happened and who was involved. It's just really lazy. IMO, it's really lazy. I really hope the hallucinations are gone for good. I don't like them. I think it's the same thing each time this scary woman i don't even know who that's supposed to be i think it's supposed to be her mom i don't know i don't know i don't know
know. I don't know. One thing I would definitely like to see in upcoming episodes is just the gang working more together, having them interact more. I know that the show is called Velma. She's our main character. We're supposed to see her a lot, but I've seen her too much. I needed her. Get out of here. Go somewhere else. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, this was really just a rant video. And so now I'm going to talk about my predictions for the rest of the season. Let's get into it. Mm. My second half of the season predictions. I'm going to read them. Norville will do a weed drug or a shroom drug <laughs> that will loosen him up and somehow lead to him wanting to be called Shaggy. Now, I say this because a lot of people were messed up about him not being called Shaggy. I was messed up about him not being called Shaggy. I think Shaggy's really cute and I love him. And so him having this name Norville, which I know is his real name. I know it's his real name. And that's what makes me think that he can just get the name Shaggy. Norville was already his real name. He can just get the name Shaggy like he did before. So I think he'll do a drug of some kind. And then his locks, instead of standing straight up, they'll fall down. <laughs> I don't know if he has locks. I don't know if those are supposed to be locks because they go straight up, but they're all like defined. So I don't know what hairstyle they were going for there, but <laughs> I he can his locks will then fall down and maybe that's why they'll call him Shaggy because he'll look like a little bit more of a shag to him. But I hope that they call him Shaggy and I hope that his locks fall downwards because I think that'll be very cute and not a generic the hairstyle that he has now. Second prediction, Velma's mom is the villain. <laughs> Velma's mom is the one scalping girls because so far... Unless it's the government trying to continue on with this, because it can't be the government, because because if it's a brain transplant, right, they aren't they aren't they aren't taking the bodies of these teenagers and then putting a new brain in them. It's not that we're seeing these teenagers, you know, Brenda disappears overnight and she comes back, she has stitches all around her head and she's acting like a totally different person, you know? They're killing these girls and stealing their brains, but they're just hot girls' brains, you know? So what are they using it for? I don't know what her mom would use it for, but maybe her mom went crazy trying to, you know, she was looking through Edna Purdue's work, she got obsessed with it, she went off trying to recreate it, she found the lab all that kind of stuff she got lost in the work and it turns out she's the killer that's been scalping these brains that's why she's disappeared and then her mom becomes a villain and then in season two we see that her mom is now in prison which will be crazy if they just kept her in the local prison but her mom is now in prison and Velma has to go and talk to her reluctantly because she needs help solving the next case because her mom is really smart and like mysteries and whatnot sure that's my theory or it's the principal or it's the principal I don't know. Maybe the principal wanted to continue her mom's work as well because I could see that too. One of them is obsessed with the mom's work and wanted to continue it. That's my prediction. Um, my, my, my hope, my hope, my prayer, my prayer. I'm praying to be, I'm praying to everybody. I'm praying to everybody that this is what happens, but everyone will lose their crush on Velma. Every single freaking character in this show is obsessed with her even Daphne after being walked all over by Velma and ignored and her feelings being cast aside while she's meeting her regular her real parents regular parents her real parents um but she still likes her at the end of the episode she still likes her she still has a crush on her she's still like oh no wonder I like that little mole girl um huh <laughs> you need to get over it you need to get over yourself. And hopefully Fred will as well. And it seems like Norville is on the path to do so. And I hope he stays. I hope Gigi stays. And I hope everyone loses their crush on Velma. And we can finally move away from that plot point. Because maybe she just needs to start loving herself a little more. It seems like that girl hates herself. But wants everyone else to be obsessed with her. I don't understand. Speaking of Gigi, I would love it if Gigi stuck around. I would love it if Gigi became the fifth member of the gang and they just gave her something to do. She's supposed to be like this hot artsy chick now. So let's say, let's put her in charge of costumes. Let's put her in charge of disguises. These This gang is going to have to come together at some point, possibly. Let's put her in charge of disguises. They need to break into places. Disguise. Gigi's on disguises, you know? Because they don't have any roles. Fred is supposed to be the trap guy. Shaggy's supposed to be the bait. Daphne, Velma was supposed to be the brains. <laughs> um, Daphne is now the muscle. Daphne can fight. So Daphne is the muscle now. And Gigi can be the disguise artist. 
And I hope, I think that'll fix the dynamic a lot better. And if no one is in love, honestly, I don't even need Gigi and Norville to continue dating. If they break up, that'd be fine by me um, because I think that would make me feel better about the dynamic anyways. And finally, the mystery gang will fully form as one. Throughout the first half of the season, I touched on this before, but we literally only see two characters from the main gang interacting at a time. Like, it's Velma and then another person <laughs> Velma and then another person Velma and then another person and then we get Daphne and Norville for that scene that B plot that they share together that was nice and then that scene later on it seems like they want to be friends but it would be really great if we could get all everyone just having a conversation that's not through Velma <laughs> that's not just everyone taking turns interacting with Velma that would be really great that would be really nice um and the, like in the previews coming up, it does seem like we're getting more variations or the groupings, which is nice. But I think by the end, since they started apart and completely different, I feel like by the end of season one, they should come together. They should want to be around each other more. And I feel like they could find a reason to be around each other more. Or the complete opposite, they realize that Velma's a piece of shit and they never want to be around her again and they exclude her. And maybe they start their own gang. Maybe they start their own mystery solving team and Velma dies. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I laughed a little bit too hard at that. I don't think that anything that actually happens in the episode matters because the plot doesn't make sense. I said I would talk about Daphne's B parent plot situation. Long story short, her parents live in the mines that got closed down that are also connected to the sewers for some reason. Why are the mines connected to the sewer system? Is that normal? I don't know. But, <laughs> um, and then they get arrested again. And then her mom frees herself. But then her dad also had Brenda's top in his back pocket. But apparently the mom had just found it. But the mom runs away. And it was nothing shady about it at all. And it turns out Daphne has two really great moms. Ugh, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> it just felt like they needed a B-plot to be going on during the first half of the season. And so they did this. But then they wrapped it up so quickly and it had no effect to the main overarching like plot at all and it didn't move Daphne's character forward in the slightest because she still just has two really great moms and a backstory that doesn't matter they were like she was like and I gotta figure out why my hair is this bright orange color and it turns out her mom just smoked a bunch when she was pregnant like there's nothing interesting there's nothing interesting that happened there I'm gonna keep watching this show yeah <laughs> why because I like the animation and I like the other characters and I and I like I like to watch animation and um and I think I like um nothing else about it but I don't know I know people said not to hate watch it I really don't even think I'm hate watching it I think I just hate Velma but I like the characters and I like the background gags and I like you know the the visual gags and I like the police officer characters the police women and and I think Jim Parsons is in this and of course hilarious <laughs> so you know there's some funny stuff going on sometimes. They may get a giggle out of me. I'm gonna put in my favorite clip from any of the episodes right now. Hot people are cut too much slack to heed warnings. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's fine. Bats are just flying rats. Ah! Ground bats, yuck! Boom, there it was. Um, but yeah, I have to film a normal outro. Thanks for watching. My name's Koji. Um, if you liked to hear me talk, I'm going to be talking about more stuff in the future. Um, that more stuff will probably be interesting to you. I have a lot of things from pop culture that I want to talk about that I think a lot of us, um, you would want to hear about. Probably not always rants. Probably also a lot of deep dives and a little bit of everything, really. I want to talk about pop culture. I want to talk about... I want to talk about cooking. I want to do cooking. <laughs> I want to do cooking. I want to do vlogs. I want to do DIYs. I want to do a little bit of everything. And that's what I plan to do with this channel. A little bit of everything. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in for a very special episode of Koji's Corner. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Um, this, this, this broadcast is brought to you thanks to viewers like you. Thanks. <laughs>